So it's a tiger on your arm? Is there a story behind that? Or you like the arm? Nah, or? I just like tiger. <laughs> Maybe if we go to the United States, I will buy it. <laughs> like, like Mike Dyson. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's a difficult change when you go somewhere else, so it's very important to have somebody to help you. First I said, oh my God, this is too early, because he was 13 years old, he was really a kid. And then he said to me, Mom, I want to try. Then I said, OK, this is his wish. He wanted to go. I was pretty nervous, I have to say, especially because he's my son. Of course, he's the most important person to me. It's just important he's happy. It was difficult, but I'm a kid. I just want to play basketball, you know? Right away when I took the ball in my hands, I was like, I want to play in the NBA, you know? I was obsessed with the NBA when I was like 10, 11, 12. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey. I'm John Musa. I'm from Bosnia, Bihar Sherskorn. <laughs> Can I get it again? <laughs> In USA, they don't even know where's Bosnia. They, they told me, like, is that near Latvia? Is that near Russia? They're, no, come on. <laughs> That's, they're really wrong. I want to make sure that people from the NBA knows who I am from talking to me, not just seeing me like on a court. Any crazy questions? No, no. We're going to test you. Oh, okay, okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> And how'd you start playing basketball? Tell us about that. Uh, I started playing basketball at when I was seven. And then uh, at the age of 11, I went to Sarajevo to live my, by myself. And uh, I, from, from there, I went to, to Zagreb when I played now. Uh, by yourself at 11? Who cooked for you? Come on, man. <laughs> Who did you work with? No one. No one. Just me. Just me. I live by myself. I take care of my laundry, my food, my everything. So. It's been a sacrifice. It's worth it? Yeah, of course. Because of basketball, I, I, I do anything. Okay. Yes. I think that this opportunity is, is like the goal of every kid, but I, I really gave my everything to basketball, and I think that I deserve this. There's a corner of the world where kids will do anything to chase the dream of playing the game they love. It was once called Yugoslavia, this place. But amid the ruins of one country, now split into many, their devotion to this game still stands remarkably intact. They start young because that's the way they want to. And that's the way that history has shown works best. And though the stars that come from here today might be too young to remember the ones who shot a path to so much hope, they're a tribute to them all the same. Welcome to the 2018 NBA Draft. Congratulations to you and your loved ones on this dream come true. A sensational pass by the Joker. Yeah, that's how we do it in Serbia. Oh, wow. Some sensation from the Lillard lost for Dirk. What a play! Heretic from center court! Oh, Heretic! So this is the story of a land where a lot's changed over the last few generations of history. Except, that is, for one thing. In the countries once known collectively as Yugoslavia,
basketball is still the passion that unites every one of them. Even if every story of the game here charts its own journey. Belgrade, Serbia, May 2018. It's the first time this basketball-crazed city has hosted the Final Four of the EuroLeague Championship. And while fans have descended from all over the continent, the clear focus is on a young star from another of Yugoslavia's former republics, Slovenia. The 19-year-old Real Madrid guard they call the Wonder Boy, Luka Doncic. Doncic is already arguably the best player in all of Europe. And the closest to him are well aware of not just what he's accomplished, MVP, <laughs> but all that could be still to come. Last year, rising star, and now the MVP. Like, it's all happening so fast. I'm so proud of him, so. Yeah, it's true. Did ever somebody got a rising star and MVP together? I don't think so. No. The first player ever to receive a first team nomination at the age of 19. Look at that of Real Madrid. The NBA draft is just five weeks away. He'll be heading to America already having made history. I was crying a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But of course he's my he's my son, he's my everything, my world. So for me that's of course more emotional. <laughs> yeah, he's doing things that have never been done before. <laughs> So, and I think he'll continue to do that. Super. Doncic's talent may be unsurpassed, but he's gotten to this point traveling a familiar, if also improbable, path. Beginning in his tiny basketball crazed nation, and when his talent was discovered, moving to the storied academy of Real Madrid when he was 13. In America, a, a good young basketball player goes to high school and then to college, and then they sign a professional contract after they get drafted. In Europe, they don't have high school basketball, so oftentimes a terrific young player, usually taller than most, maybe he's 13 or 14, and he's already six feet one, six feet two. A professional team in Europe signs him, like Luka Doncic, at 13, and he heads to a place like Madrid. And technically, FIBA rules say you're not supposed to pay a player before they turn 18, okay? Technically, he might still have his amateur status, but he is being groomed, coached, trained. All the expenses are paid. In effect, he's a professional. He was a little bit shocked in the beginning, especially because he didn't speak Spanish. I know a lot of people told me, you're too young to go, so, but I didn't want to listen to them, I want to listen to me. And my mom is very important you know, to be here with me. It's important to have somebody with you. Do you remember when you came the first day to the school? <laughs> that was a really hard. You needed to have a suit, and you didn't like it. I'm really, really happy and proud of him, especially because he's a great person and also a great basketball player. Doncic, 6'6", 195, just 16 years old. Youngest ever to play for Real Madrid. We played uh, first of all against Boston Celtics, then next year we played against OKC here in Madrid. I was 16 years old playing against some of the best players in the world, Russell Westbrook, so I was you know, a little bit scared. <laughs> it was just amazing to be on the court with them. What Luca's done at his age in the EuroLeague and in the ACB is, is unprecedented. I mean, even Ricky Rubio and, you know, Pau and Rudy Fernandez, Sergio Rodriguez, none of those guys have accomplished what Luca has accomplished at his age. He's been playing against men, men who are making a living at this game, men who are trying to knock his block off, men who realize he's getting all this attention and he's eventually going to be an NBA player. So if I can prove my worth against this young hotshot, Maybe the NBA will take a peek at me. American college basketball is like double-A baseball. It's a good level, but you're still not close to the NBA yet. The cross-up on Victor Claver. 
Oh, that's going to be shown over and over and over again. If you play in the EuroLeague, which Luca did, there were over 60 players in the EuroLeague that had been drafted by the NBA, first or second rounders. The level is high. The level is so high that the average EuroLeague champion would beat the NCAA champion by 40 points. That's a fact. I don't care if it's Villanova or North Carolina Duke. You're talking about men versus boys. Six years after Doncic left Slovenia for Spain, he became one of the most talked about athletes in the world. A professional who looks the part in every which way imaginable. If you go away from home with 13 years old, you become very mature. So this helped him to develop in basketball too, of course. The past several months have felt like a coming out party for Doncic. Doncic. Beginning in September. Number three, good! When along with NBA veteran Goran Dragic. Doncic, he takes it all the way! Oh! How about that from Luka Doncic? He led Slovenia to its first European championship title. Big time! Don't tell me this man's not going number one. Now in Belgrade, the objective is to lead his pro team to its own championship before heading across the Atlantic for the draft. And in the semifinals against Siska Moscow, Doncic scores 16 points to lead Real Madrid to a nine point victory and a place in the title game. He's made the unlikeliest of roads look easy. And yet just a few hundred miles west, in another of Yugoslavia's former republics, Croatia, a tale of another NBA hopeful is unfolding under considerably less scrutiny. John and Musa is also 19 years old, and he is also projected by talent scouts to have NBA ability. But his path to the sports pinnacle has already been harder worn. He plays for a team in Croatia's domestic league, with smaller crowds, lesser competition, and more question marks about what his future may hold. Behind Doncic, Musa is the second best prospect in any of the former Yugoslavian nations. Some of his biggest challenges, though, could be part of any basketball story. With Janan, in the beginning, there was friction because, you know, you have a really young man in the group of adults and uh, he wanted always to show that he is the best one and, uh, and sometimes arrogant and sometimes uh, behaving even in not proper way. You know, I love to play more than anything. I love to be on the court, I love to interact with, uh, with the players, I love to be a good teammate, I love to be a leader on the court. And when you don't have chance, when the coach don't trust you, that's, that's so frustrating for me. He's arrogant. He is hungry, he is an uh, egomaniac, but this is all this kind of ingredients you need to have to become uh, a leader and superstar. I think that uh, a line between cocky and, and confident and having fun on the court is really, really tiny. And I think that I'm, I'm not cocky. If you like meet me in person and see how am I as a person and you still think I'm cocky, that's okay. We're a long way from where we were 15 years ago as far as the NBA evaluating players. Um, there was a time where I think uh, there, was a, there was a mystique to the European player because the truth is that most European players were thought of as being soft, um, not tough enough to play with the, with the big boys. The Los Angeles Lakers select Vladi Divac from Belgrade, Yugoslavia. The smile and general manager Jerry West's face on draft day 1989 said it all. Because waiting there for the Lakers was a prototype NBA center. You know what I'm talking about. Seven foot one, big body, can shoot, rebound, run the floor. But the surprise was he wasn't coming from Georgetown, Syracuse, or UCLA. But would you believe Yugoslavia? There was not too much trust in European players back then, you know, and uh, you had to do a lot of work and, and a lot of, you know, uh, adoption, you know, between the European basketball and, and, and NBA. KJ. No, no, KH. KH. KJ. K -H. Obviously, language was a uh, big, big trouble for me because, you know, back then I didn't speak any word. Dino. Nice play. Uh, 
My perception of the European players was absolute zero. Big fourth quarter for Dino Raja. We had no respect by anybody. Nobody believed that Europeans can play. And it was a very skeptical situation. So back to Peja, break out to the rack. Power jam on the right. I think back in the 90s, there was a perception that they were finesse players. Boy, did he throw that down with emphasis. But they didn't like the physicality. You know, so in some respects, they were kind of frowned upon. Russia on a Sturevich. Not so much from... Uh, executives, just from players. What we've learned through the years is that these are tough-minded guys. Oh, baby. They'll spill their guts out for you. You don't need a lot of money to go to a court or a gym and play basketball. Kind of reminds me of a kid growing up in the Bronx or on a farm in Indiana. You know, that kid from Belgrade or up in the mountains of Croatia. As long as he's got a basket and a ball, they can go out there and shoot. Carroll gets a look. Hands it! And Macedonia erupts! I was welcomed over there, and the first game you feel like, am I going to score the first shot? And I was lucky, I scored the first, the second, so I say, okay, I can play here. Everybody getting in there! We didn't know what the European style of basketball was, but eventually, I think, the league started to change. They knew how to dribble, pass, shoot, had a good sort of understanding of how to play. Lillard lobs for Nurkic, what a play! Here in America, if you're big, you go down on one end with the big fellas, you work on layups. If you're small, you go to the, the other end. And what they did was to show us that there will be guys that are seven foot and that can shoot and that can move and are expected to do what guards do. And that's something that I always admire from players that came from overseas because uh, they had a wonderful skill set. We all prove that uh, we can actually play. I was a big guy, usually with the coaches would work on the big guy moves, but uh, our coaches exposed me to be a point guard, to be a shooting guard, so basically I, I developed my skills, uh, not just as a big guy, but you know, as a small guy too. At the start of the 2018 season, there were 16 players from what was once Yugoslavia in the NBA, out of a combined population of 21 million. There were just 48 other NBA players from the rest of Europe, in a population of over 700 million. Montenegro has two players out of a population of 500,000, while Italy also has two players, and it's a country of 60 million people. It started with Vlade and Peja Stojakovic, and obviously when Drazen came over, and now outside of the United States, I, I, I think you can easily make the argument that more great players have come from the former Yugoslavia than any other region of the world. It's tempting to wonder what the recipe for such success is. If somehow, the passion for the game here is different than it is in so many other places. But the closer you look, the answer appears to be in simple, familiar, and time-tested virtues. Of coaching, dedication, and discipline. You can't imagine Dražen Petrović, who was a real champion and idol and symbol of basketball of, of this region without discipline. Why shoot two and you can step back for free? Uh, waking up at the 4 o'clock, 4.30, and uh, shoot hundreds of three points on his own. Of all the great players to come out of the former Yugoslavia, the most iconic is Dražen Petrović. The charismatic guard who rose to stardom with the New Jersey Nets in the early 1990s, only to die in a car crash when he was 28. In Croatia and beyond, Drazen is not only a hero, but also the epitome of what a basketball system decades in the making can create. Pa, ono što je zasigurno naša škola ovde na ovim prostorima, zasnovana je na velikom radu i ogromnoj disciplini. I kažem vam, vojna, čelična disciplina. Demokracija je za neke druge oblasti. You know, it's a military regime, you know, and definitely make us better as a players, but also later in our careers, being part of the NBA. Nothing, you know, was on the road that we couldn't, you know, overcome. There is no successful player, there is no successful team without the discipline. You know, you are looking for this uh, factor X. 
but the discipline is crucial. I mean, if the players are, are not enough discipline to practice every day, uh, there is no success. You have these coaches who were demanding and treated their teams like it was an army. And um, it was about doing what I want, when I want it, as hard as you can do it, and do it exactly the way I want it. And that might have bred some uh, tension between the coach and the players, but what it also did is it reinforced the fundamentals of the game. We used to practice like three times a day. Like wake up at six in the morning, do the running, then have a breakfast, then do the morning workout, then you know lunch, afternoon rest, and then afternoon workout. And we were located in the middle of the woods, 15 of us plus the coaches, and that's it. You don't see nobody, the wolves and the bears, that's it. Ljudi koji se rađaju na ovim prostorima imaju veliku predodređenost, zato što su borci, prkosni su, takmičari su, vole da pobeđuju, imaju predodređenost za vrkunski sport i to naročito za sportove kako grupne, tako i pojedinačne sa lopte. The former Yugoslavia territories delivered the best players in the world and they were always hungry to compete and uh, hungry for international fame. Maybe because we are coming from a region which uh, suffered a lot in near history, that uh, somehow their hunger for success and their hunger uh, to compete uh, is somehow natural. John and Musa is from the small city of Bihać in Bosnia born years after it was torn apart by the war. Though basketball has long offered him ample opportunity to head far from home. Colleges were calling, like North Carolina, Duke, Kansas. All those colleges were calling and said, come on, come here. And I was like, you know, that's good, but I have already a professional career here. The path to that career started in earnest when he was 11 and discovered at a tournament in Sarajevo on the other side of his small nation. Like so many other young prospects before him, he was given an opportunity to resolve that he'd dedicate the rest of his childhood to chasing his dream and leave behind his family and everything he'd ever known. My mom and my dad set me up in front of them and said to me like, you wanna do this? And I said, hell yeah. You know, and they said like, if you wanna do this, you have your dream, go for it. You know, and that's when the journey starts. Žena nas to vidlo u očima kad se razgovarala sa njim, svaki moju riječ koju sam sa njim razgovarao, upijao je. I ono što sam mu savjetovao i govorio na terenu je to odrađivao sa puno volje i energije. When my parents left me in Sarajevo and I went to my apartment, I was starting to cry and I was like crying for 7-8 hours straight. You're like in Sarajevo, in a big city, and you're 11 years old, and you're on your own. You know, you have to go and practice alone. You go home alone, and you live on your own. Dan kada je Džana nostao u Sarajevu, 26. august, znači nešto je što je Nešto što je u meni i danas dan prisutno. Ostavili smo ga ispred kuće gdje je trebao da stanuje. Krenuli smo niz ulicu, neki stotinjak metara ispod. Zaustavili smo auto i plakali smo i suprugi ja. Moja mama je uvijek 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 uvijek. Uvijek uvijek uvijek. I moj dad uvijek uvijek. My love for him is something amazing. Definitely we are a team. But my parents want him living his dream. I'm thankful for everything. Those people are, are, are mean the world to me. You know, they're, they're everything to me. 
you're supposed to be. They gave me this opportunity, they let me go, that I achieved my dreams. I I što uvijek pokušavamo nekako da trenutke kada smo zajedno iskoristimo u nekakvom prisnom. Mislim ja više, ja se više staramo da ti starac, ne vetera. Odnosu i gledamo svakako da svaki trenutak bude u nekakvom veselju, radosti, smijehu. Svaki ako ćete svi biti prijatelji kad budeš igrao u njih. Jer znamo da će doći dan kada će ono tići vjerovatno daleko. I ja neću biti više u poziciji da pružim to. There were plenty of days when I wanted to go home because you know when you have bad games, when you have like tough practices, when you don't do it well, when I need my family the most and they drive like four and a half, five hours to see me, to talk to me and go back. So that's that's something that I will never forget. Dad is in the military right now. He was in a war in the 90s. He had like 2,000 people behind him, and he was responsible for all those people by the age of 21. So it was very tough. He, he had my mom as his wife. Uh, my mom was, was pregnant. And I just imagine how, how tough uh, it was for him. It was so emotional for him, you know. He knows a lot of people who was there and with him, and uh, war is something terrible in our history. Everything was um, so terrible there. Uh, there was a disaster, you know. As for the Musa family, the tragedy was particularly personal. When in besieged Bihar, Saudana gave birth to twin girls who died in the hospital because of lack of medical supplies. I was uh, six years old when uh, my parents uh, told me, look, your sisters died. And it was maybe the toughest moment in my entire life. I cannot imagine how difficult it was for him because that it was normal to kill somebody, to die. And you have wife, you have, you have son, and you know, you, you can lose your life. That's, that's why he's my hero. In 2015, Janin learned what it was like to be a hero himself when he led Bosnia's under-16 team to a European championship. The first team championship at any level for his young nation. The team was a collection of Muslims, Catholics, and Orthodox Christians, celebrated for their diversity, and greeted upon their return in Sarajevo by a crowd of 50,000. One word, brother. One word, one word, one word, one word, one word, one word, one word. Na čelu sa Josipom Pančom, Jenesom, Nemanovićem, mi smo napravili nevjerovatan uspjeh koji je Bosna i Hercegovina nije doživjela u nekoliko stotina godina. Mi smo toliko ponosni na sebe da ne znam, apsolutno nisam još sumirao utiske, tako da ne mogu još ništa reći. Jednostavno sam preponosan na nas i preponosan na sve ove navijače što su bili sve vrijeme uz nas. Mi kao roditelji zaista nemamo riječi da iskažemo naš ponos naše zadovoljstvo. Bilo bi dobro da se izmisli neka nova riječ, jer ponos nije dovoljna da opiše ono što mi osjećamo u ovom trenutku. E zaista je to i danas tako. As much as that team showed how far things had come in Bosnia since the war, elsewhere during Musa's career, He's come all too close to the reminders of what split apart Yugoslavia so violently before he was born. As a Muslim playing in front of hostile crowds on his pro team. 
I had a few bad moments with the fans, you know, they were insulting me because of the religion. But I see that as a motivation. And I'm very proud that I have religion that I have. And I think that I'm re representing that very well. That's, you know, that's tough for, especially for the young player. But I didn't lose my confidence because I worked hard. And I think that that mindset that I had is bringing me right here where I am today. Today we have our independent states and you know we have to respect there is Bosnia and Herzegovina, this is Serbia, this is Croatia, this is Slovenia, Montenegro, this is Macedonia, this is Kosovo. We have to respect that people have a right to choose whatever they want as a religion or as, as, as individual values. For sure, they are, they are primitives all around uh, the globe, including our region, a lot, which would uh, yell on some player because of the different nationality or religions or uh, social background or of race. <laughs> <laughs> but if someone is a good man, if someone is a, a good player, who cares? And if you would ask any of these idiots who scream and yell on him, would you like Janan to sign next season for their team? For sure they will say yes. And this season, there has been no shortage of cheers for Musa playing for Seda Vita. And he continued to emerge as a force at small forward, taking his team to its league championship game against Drazen Petrovic's old club. The game was Musa's final contest before setting his sights on the NBA. And with the late legend's jersey hanging in the rafters, he led his team in scoring on their way to a fourth consecutive league title. Proceedings in Belgrade, Luka Doncic and Real Madrid face off against the Turkish club Fenerbahce with the European title at stake. And if there's more pressure on the 19 year old to deliver a title for his longtime club, he doesn't show it as he scores 15 points and leads his team in assists on the way to the biggest team trophy on the continent. He'll win the Final Four MVP award and donate his jersey from the victory to the Drazen Petrovic Museum in Zagreb, Croatia. Next stop, America. Before his arrival in New York, John and Musa traveled on his own to five different U.S. cities to work out for NBA teams. A couple days away, and I'm very excited, you know, the, the four days. Whatever he could do to make an impression on those clubs. Where do you think you stack up among the first round prospects in this draft? I think I'm a lottery pick for sure, but... Uh, Hoping to improve his draft stock and make himself a lottery selection. <laughs> As it stands now, just before the draft, he's projected to go anywhere from the middle of the first all the way to the second round. People say that we have ono nešto, you know, that's something. And you cannot describe that because you have that something in your character, how you handle the business, how you handle the job. And that's, that's something that I, I hope I have and, and Luca as well, you know, and it's tough for us, but I think that we will show the world that, that Europeans are, are, are bad guys. 
As for Luka Doncic, he arrives in New York just a day after winning yet another title, the Spanish League Championship. Thank you. Thank you. I hope the Sixers come up and trade for you. In less than 24 hours before the draft. For both players, the full draft experience is a preview of all that awaits with life in the NBA. And I want you to give me your sexiest look. I know how to be sexy, bro. I mean, I'm very excited, you know. I'm just happy to be here, happy to attend this. And, and I just, I just want to have fun. I want to enjoy this moment. And it's, it's, it's like a dream come true. Nice to meet you. Thank you, bro. I can see that. <laughs> I can see that. Big dude, big dude. I'm showing this one with you. Yeah, Statue of Liberty's right there. World trade. Pretty sick. 60 prospects will be selected over the two rounds of the draft. Only a few, like Doncic, are all but guaranteed to be among the first picks. But every young hopeful who's come to town gets faded like a future star. I'm very excited and, and I'm nervous as well, as I don't know what team will pick me. But if you can't just melt, melt it down with all of this. Okay, blend it. Yeah, yeah. blend it. Sorry. No, no, it's all good. It's hard to be calm in, in these situations, but I, I, I try to stay calm. Yeah, it's going to be a, a nice night. It's going to be a nice night. Have to be fresh. Wonder boy. As Doncic gets ready, he's visited by the likely top overall pick, DeAndre Ayton. She's <laughs> enough. I do. I don't. Why are you making it longer? It's too long. Well, then you do it. And my sister. This is terrible. What? What? Ready to roll. As soon as I started playing professional basketball, I was dreaming about the draft. The commissioner calls out my name. The fans are crazy. They can't wait to see me play, and I know I'm ready, and that's that's why you work for your entire life. I, I was born ready, you know, and especially for this, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. My heart was pumped up like crazy. I realized that I'm going to to the place where my decision and my life will change, like in one night. Coming from the small region and you're on a big stage, I want to show the world that I'm capable of doing great things. But I had to fight like crazy to, to get this opportunity. Just, just to go and, and walk in the, that arena and see all those people. For me, I think that I'm the best player in the draft, that I, I should be like first pick in the draft for sure. But I realize how the draft goes. You pick him, okay. I will show you when we first meet up that they made a mistake, that I'm better than him, and that's it. Good evening. Musa will sit in the stands and watch Doncic get announced like a star of the show. Congratulations to you and your loved ones on this dream come true. My mom was just putting her hands around me and she said like everything was be okay. With the first pick, the Phoenix Suns select DeAndre Ayton. You know you 
work for it. You have to stay humble. Whatever happens tonight, we are still family. We love each other. We will support each other no matter what. With the third pick in the 2018 NBA Draft, the Atlanta Hawks select Luka Doncic from Ljubljana, Slovenia. And it has been quite a couple of days for Luka Doncic. With the fourth pick in the 2018 NBA Draft, with the fifth pick, with the sixth pick, the Atlanta Hawks trade Luka Doncic to the Dallas Select Miles Bridges, Utah Jazz. Select Grayson Allen from Duke University. With the 24th pick, the Portland Trailblazers. Select Anthony Simon, Aaron Holly, Maurice Wagner, Landry Shaman. With the 29th pick in the 2018 NBA Draft. When I saw that cameras on me in the 29th spot, I was starting to cry because I was so emotional. I, I knew that. I'm in the place where I wanted to be my entire life. And especially when I had my, my family next to me, you know. That was really, really emotional. The Brooklyn Nets select Janan Musa from Bihaj Bosnia and Herzegovina and KK Sedevita in Croatia. I cannot describe that. I really can't. To be in that position that I wear the same jersey like Dražen Petrovic, to be part of something that he was part of. Thank you, bro. How are you? You will see. I was thinking about how I make my mom proud, you know, and that sacrifice that my whole family made. You have to say your path, and anything is possible, you know. Yeah, that was that was the most best moment in my entire life, for sure. Yeah. And while Doncic is happy to head to Dallas, any disappointment Musa had with his late selection is tempered by the adrenaline from knowing in just a few months he'll be playing in this arena. Which camera? Every camera. In the greatest league the sport has to offer. Oh, of course, yeah, with everybody. Another kiss. A big family hug. They are just the latest to come to the NBA from such an unlikely corner of the globe. A place where basketball is more than a national game. It's a connection between generations. Keeping alive a proud tradition of the past, but even more critically, inspiring the next ones who dream about following in their footsteps and reaching the very top of the basketball world.